Um, thank you very much. My name is John Dumelo, and um, I'm an actor. I still act. I still act. But then now I'm doing agriculture as well. So I'm sure people will ask, okay, so when is the next movie coming out? I mean, it's going to come out soon. Um, but I'm here to tell you my story about what happened before I went into agriculture. Um, so it's a bold step growing agri into the next century. What made me get into agriculture is passion. Now, I'm somebody who likes to take a lot of risk. I've done, I've tried so many businesses. I've tried bakery, I've tried hair. I used to sell hair, Jamelo hair. You remember? Peruvian, Brazilian, baby curls, everything. <laughs> and then what happened was, I have a lot of female friends, so what happened was, they came, oh, John, give me hair, take, give me hair, take. And that's how the business collapsed. <laughs> so um, I didn't do well with that one because I didn't have passion for it. But with agriculture, I had a passion for it. And so I'm going to show you, the next slide, I'm going to show you something. There are three numbers. I would want you to memorize those three numbers. But do not use it for lottery. I repeat. The first number is 10. The second is 35. The next is 110. So please memorize these numbers well. If you use your lottery, that's fine. Give me your 10% when you chop the thing tomorrow. But here's the thing. Why agree? Agree because there was a time I wanted to open a restaurant. And people would say, okay, John, open a restaurant, open a restaurant. I was like, okay, fine, I'll do that. But what I realized was there are so many restaurants in Accra. So what would make me different? And I realized that, okay, most of these restaurants, what happens? They need ingredients. Everybody eats every day. So all these restaurants, we need tomatoes. All these restaurants, we need pepper. All these restaurants, we need onions and everything. So why don't I venture into um, agriculture? And that's, what, and that's what made me get into agriculture. I was like, look, let me, get, let me start the value chain. Let me be the one to supply all these restaurants, meat and all the agri products so that at the end of the day, I can service about 100 restaurants in Accra alone and still make my money. So that's why I got into agriculture. Now, what was the first number I said? Hey. You chop money. 10, now let me tell you what happened. Those days there was no Instagram. Those days there was no Twitter. Those days there was nothing. So I couldn't get a picture of myself then. But the next slide is a picture of me standing by my first farm. Now that is me. 10 years old. I used to live in community six, and that's when I developed my, uh, uh, my interest in agriculture. I used to grow corn when I was a kid, but the corn died, as usual. But that was a learning experience for me. And so that, that was when I got into agri. Fast forward now, what I'm doing is I have 2,000 acres of farmland. Last, the first year, two years ago, I did 10 acres of maize. Now I'm doing 150 acres of maize, also 150 acres of beans. What happens, the reason why I'm mixing the maize and the beans is because, you know, when you plow the land and you grow your maize, inside the maize you can grow the beans. And so when, the, when you finish harvesting the, the maize, you can harvest the beans as well. So that's double profit for you, if I may put it that way. The next slide, I, I did okra, 10 acres of okra. I did 10, but I only got three acres. And that's the only okra I was able to harvest. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's because it was an experiment. And most of the insects and things chopped the okra. And, but in that picture, I was supposed to be smiling to look like a happy farmer. Because a Greek is not easy. But then, you know, that's what happened. So, but now, I'm going to do 50 acres of okra starting next month. So everything for me is trial and error. And that's what agri, agri you need a lot of patience for agriculture. It's not money in, money out quickly. It's money in wait. <laughs> Just wait. Forget about that money. And then you get your money out. What I'm also doing is sack farming. The advantage of sack, and that's um, cucumber. The advantage of sack farming is you don't plow the land. You just get your sacks, you put the, the, the seeds in the sack, and then it grows. You can control pests, you can control weeds, you can control so many other things. And that's what we are doing right now. We are doing sack farming. 
Then also, we are doing maize, I mean, snails. Presently, we, when I say we, I'm talking about me and the guys I work with on the farm. We are doing snail farming. We have 45,000 snails now, and we are expanding to a million snails in the next 12 months to feed Ghana and West Africa. Now, it's not been easy. Here are the challenges. The first one is tractor services. These, this is very expensive. When you go to the north, and I'm sure some of you are from the north here, to plow one acre of land is 80 Ghana cities. One acre. How many people in the north or how many farmers can afford 80 cities per acre? Very few. And so for me, that was that, that is a very challenging factor. But before then, also get before you get into a Greek, you have to find the right market. People just get into a Greek and they don't they, they, they just harvest and they say, okay, they are now looking for the market. That's wrong. You need to find the market first before you get into a Greek. Then you have the cost of land. Um, somebody asked, okay, so John, how come you have all these land? And I said, look, getting land is very easy in Ghana, honestly speaking. You know, because Ghana, in, in Ghana, most of the land is owned by our families. All you have to talk to your Ebusi Apenyin. Ebusi Apenyin is like head of the family. So you get your land and then that's it. So when people say cost of land is expensive, I say, look, go to your village. They can give you an acre, two acres of two acres free, and then you can get um, land to start with. And then also cost of fertilizer and other chemicals. Chemicals in quotes because we use pesticides and weedicides to ward off um, the 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 insects and uh, everything that attacks it. I mean, last year my my farm in the north was attacked by the army worms, and it really affected not just me but other. Um, maize farmers as well. So the cost of fertilizer and chemicals is also something that deters a lot of people. Now, what is the other number I ask you to memorize? <laughs> okay, 35. Why 35? 35 because Africa imports $35 billion worth of imports into the continent. $35 billion. We import everything. We import rice, we import oil, we import vegetables, maize, pork, beef, fish, tomatoes, all into Africa. Yet, we just use just 2% of our land for agriculture. So what's the real problem? And what's the solution? Number one, African farmers need new technology. We need high yielding um, seeds. We need seeds that are more resilient to, 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 um, to diseases and also those that can give a lot of harvest. And also we need new technologies to boost our yields in rice and cocoa and other things. And secondly, we need access to more electricity, irrigation and other things. Now, let me tell you something. I mean, I know for a fact that most African governments are doing well, but I think more needs to be done if we want to compete with other um, farmers in the West. And then of course we need sound policies. Let me give you an example. Ghana still imports poultry, which is sad. So if one day the authorities get up and say, look, you know what? We're going to ban poultry imports from whichever country it is. What's going to happen? We're going to boost local production. And that's why I said we need sound policies. And also, fortunately, most of the farmers in Ghana or Africa are women. I know it's hard to believe, but most of the farmers are women. Yet, they don't have access to credit. They don't have access to capital. Uh, yeah. Credit and capital, same thing. They don't have access to farming tools and they don't have all these things. What we need to do in Africa is to match boot for boot our farmers from the developed countries. And it can be done. It's as simple as that. All we need to do is to mechanize our farming. Let's stop giving the, the farmer whole cutlass and a bag of fertilizer to go and farm. Let's mechanize our farming so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to produce 10 times what is produced in the West. What is the last number? I will give you five Ghana. <laughs> 110. African Development Bank says by the year 2025, Africa would import $110 billion worth of imports, agric imports into Africa. Two, that's 2025. That's in the next seven years. That should tell you that there's money waiting for each and every one of you who wants to go into a Greek.
Because instead of importing, they can buy from you, 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 if and only if you get into agriculture. Yet, we say that agriculture is just for the poor people who want to do farming, which is wrong. And in agriculture, what you sow when you sow is what you reap. Let me give you an example. Somebody will sow maize in May, which is the rainy season, and harvest it in September, which is the end of the rainy season. Guess what? At that time, there's everybody else is harvesting maize. So what happens to the maize? It gets rotten because you, you can't sell it or the price comes down. What you need to do is to plant maize at this time. When you plant maize at this time, you harvest it in December. December, the prices of maize goes high and you can make money. So what you sow when you sow is how you reap and that is agriculture. Let's change the narrative. I challenge everybody here to at least get into agriculture. There's markets there. There's money waiting for you. In the next seven years, Africa will be importing $110 billion worth of agri. If you start right now, you could be the next billionaire. Together, let's feed ourselves whilst getting paid for it. That is the only way forward for the African youth. That is the only way for us, forward for us. The last thing I would say is Agric is Bay. Thank you very much.